Welcome to another episode in our All About series. There are several different types of nebulae, emission, reflection, planetary, dark nebula, and supernova remnants are the main types. In this episode, however, we're going to explore All About Emission Nebulae, how they came to be, why they matter in the grand scheme of the cosmos, and of course, how you can spot them in the night sky. Whether you've been at this for years or just starting out, there's something here for everyone. So let's set off on this journey together and delve into the mysteries of emission nebulae. Welcome to the Astro Guy Podcast. I'm not an expert, I'm an amateur like you. I'm here to learn and here to teach. So let's enjoy the ride together. Carpe Noctum, seize the night. Welcome to the Astro Guy Podcast. I'm your host, Wayne Zool. In this episode, we're diving into the mesmerizing world of emission nebulae. These nebulae are some of the most breathtaking and intriguing objects in the night sky. But what exactly are they? And how do they fit into the grand tapestry of the cosmos? We'll start by breaking down the basics. What defines an emission nebula? And what makes it glow so vividly in the dark expanses of space? From there, we'll explore the processes that give rise to these luminous clouds of gas and the role of the young hot stars that energize them, and why these nebulas are often referred to as stellar nurseries. Emission nebulae are some of the most vibrant and fascinating objects in the universe. They are vast clouds of ionized gas that emit light across various wavelengths, painting the deep sky with rich colors. The most common type of emission nebula is the H2 region, which is primarily composed of ionized hydrogen, hence the name H2, where the 2 denotes ionized hydrogen as opposed to neutral hydrogen, which is H1. These nebulae shine so brightly due to a process called ionization. Here's how it works. Within an emission nebula, young hot stars, often of spectral type O or B, release a tremendous amount of ultraviolet or UV radiation. This high energy light has enough power to strip electrons from hydrogen atoms, turning them into protons. This is the ionization part. Once ionized, the gas is no longer neutral, but charged, and it enters a phase where it's constantly trying to recombine back into neutral atoms. When electrons recombine with protons, they release energy in the form of light. The wavelength or color of this light depends on the energy levels involved in the recombination process. For hydrogen, this often results in the emission of a characteristic red light known as hydrogen alpha, or the HA line, which is why many emission nebulae appear red in long exposure images. But hydrogen isn't the only player in these nebulae. Other elements, like helium, oxygen, nitrogen, and sulfur, are also present, though in much smaller quantities. Each of these elements contribute to the nebulae's color palette. For example, doubly ionized oxygen, or O3, can give off a striking greenish hue, while ionized nitrogen, or N2, often contributes to red or orange hues. The presence and relative abundance of these elements can vary from one nebula to another, influencing their overall appearance. So the glowing colorful clouds we see are not just random. They're the result of a complex interplay of stellar radiation and the atomic makeup of the nebula. This interplay makes emission nebulae not just beautiful to look at, but they are also crucial sites for understanding the life cycles of stars and the chemical evolution of galaxies. One of the most fascinating aspects of an emission nebula is its intimate connection with star formation. These glowing clouds of gas are often found in regions where new stars are being born, making them both beautiful to observe and scientifically significant. The process begins in massive molecular clouds, where the gravitational collapse of gas and dust leads to the birth of stars. As these newborn stars emerge, they emit intense ultraviolet radiation especially those stars that are hot and massive, like O and B type stars. This radiation is strong enough to ionize the surrounding gas, 
stripping electrons from atoms within the nebula. The iconic glow we associate with emission nebula is a direct consequence of this ionization. When the free electrons eventually recombine with protons, they release energy in the form of light. The wavelengths of this light depend on the specific transition of the electrons, which is why we see such a variety of colors in emission nebulae. Again, that's only in long exposure images. Visually, it's almost impossible to see color in a nebula. The characteristic red hues often come from hydrogen atoms, particularly through the hydrogen alpha line. However, depending on the nebula's composition, you might also see greens, blues, and even purples, contributed by elements like oxygen, sulfur, and nitrogen. These regions aren't just beautiful, they are active sites of stellar nurseries, where the cycle of star birth and death plays out over millions or billions of years. The stars formed within these nebulae can profoundly affect their environment. For instance, the intense radiation and stellar winds from these young, massive stars can trigger further star formation in nearby regions by compressing the gas and dust, leading to the formation of new stars. Alternatively, in some cases, the same processes might inhibit star formation by dispersing the surrounding material. Moreover, the presence of young stars in emission nebulae offers astronomers a natural laboratory to study stellar evolution. By observing these regions, we can gain insights into the early stages of star development, the mechanisms that lead to star formation, and the interplay between stars and their birth clouds. This is why emission nebulae aren't just pretty pictures in the night sky. They are key to understanding the dynamics of our universe, and the processes that have shaped it. So how are emission nebulae formed? Emission nebulae are born in the bustling stellar nurseries of our universe, particularly in regions where massive stars are forming. These stars, often many times more massive than our sun, produce an immense amount of ultraviolet radiation that ionizes the surrounding gas. This process creates the characteristic glow of emission nebula as the ionized gas emits light at specific wavelengths, but this is just the beginning of the nebula's story. The formation of an emission nebula begins in a dense molecular cloud, a vast collection of gas and dust that serves as the raw material for star formation. Within these clouds, gravity pulls the material together, eventually leading to the formation of new stars. As these stars ignite, their intense ultraviolet radiation floods the surrounding gas, ionizing atoms, and stripping electrons from them. This ionization process creates what is known as an H2 region, essentially a zone of ionized hydrogen that emits light primarily in the red part of the spectrum. However, the life cycle of an emission nebula doesn't end there. The radiation pressure from the newly formed stars, along with powerful stellar winds, begin to push the surrounding gas. Over time, these forces can disperse the gas, effectively blowing away the material that once formed the nebula. This dispersal process can lead to the eventual dissipation of the nebula, leaving behind a cluster of young stars. In some cases, the expelled gas might even trigger the formation of new stars in adjacent regions, continuing the cycle of star formation. Understanding emission nebulae is crucial for unraveling the mysteries of star formation and the evolution of galaxies. These nebulae are often found in the spiral arms of galaxies, where the concentration of gas and dust is high and star formation is most active. The study of emission nebulae provides insights into the processes that govern the birth and early life cycle of stars, as well as the interaction between stars and their surrounding environments. In fact, astronomers can learn about the chemical composition of the interstellar medium, the rate of star formation in different parts of a galaxy, and the impact that young, massive stars have on their surroundings. The light from these nebulae carries with it a wealth of information about the physical conditions within them, including temperature, density, and chemical composition. This makes emission nebulae not only stunning objects to observe, but also essential tools for helping us learn about our universe. Additionally, these nebula play a key role in the broader evolution of galaxies. The energy output from the young stars within an emission nebula 
can also influence the overall dynamics of the galaxy, affecting everything from the distribution of gas to the rate of future star formation. In this way, emission nebulae are not just isolated pockets of activity. They are integral components of a cosmic ecosystem, driving the evolution of galaxies over millions and billions of years. Some of the most iconic and well-studied emission nebulae in the night sky are more than just beautiful sights. They are critical to our understanding of the universe. A great example is the Orion Nebula, or M42. This is perhaps the most familiar and accessible emission nebula for amateur astronomers. Located about 1,500 light years from Earth, it's the closest region of massive star formation to our planet. The Orion Nebula is a colossal cloud of gas and dust spanning over 24 light years, and within it, a new generation of stars are being born. This nebula is part of a much larger structure known as the Orion Molecular Cloud Complex, which includes other famous objects like the Horsehead Nebula. The intense ultraviolet radiation from the young stars within M42 ionizes the surrounding gas, creating the nebula's characteristic glow. Observations of the Orion Nebula have provided astronomers with critical data on the processes involved in star formation, particularly how young stars interact with their surrounding environment. The Eagle Nebula, or M16, is located about 7,000 light years away in the constellation Serpens. This is another prominent star forming region. This nebula gained widespread fame due to the Hubble Space Telescope and, later, the James Webb Space Telescope's breathtaking images of the pillars of creation, which are towering columns of gas and dust where new stars are actively forming. These pillars are part of the larger H2 region within the Eagle Nebula, where radiation from newly formed stars is carving out cavities and shaping the surrounding gas into these striking structures. The Eagle Nebula provides a dramatic example of the feedback processes in star formation, where radiation and winds from young stars sculpt their natal clouds and influence subsequent generations of star formation. The Lagoon Nebula, another example, is located about 5,000 light years away. It is one of the most spectacular star forming regions in our galaxy. Spanning an impressive 110 light years across, this vast cloud of gas and dust is home to a myriad of newborn stars and star clusters. The most prominent among them is the open cluster NGC 6530, which is embedded within the nebula. The Lagoon Nebula's glow is primarily due to the intense ultraviolet radiation emitted by these young, massive stars within the nebula, which ionizes the surrounding hydrogen gas, causing it to emit the characteristic red light of an H2 region. One of the standout features of the Lagoon Nebula is its complex structure, which includes dark, twisted clouds of dust known as Bach globules, named for Bart Bach. These dense pockets of gas and dust are in the early stages of star formation, where the gravitational collapse is beginning to form new protostars. The Lagoon Nebula is also known for its bright star forming region known as the Hourglass Nebula near the center of the nebula. This small, intensely bright region is powered by the radiation from an extremely hot young star, which is rapidly shaping its surrounding environment. The Lagoon Nebula is an ideal target for astronomers studying the early stages of star formation and the interaction between young stars and their environments. Observations in multiple wavelengths, from infrared to X-ray, have provided a wealth of data on the conditions within this nebula, revealing the complex interplay of forces that drive the formation of stars and the evolution of nebulae. For stargazers, the Lagoon Nebula offers a rich mix of nebula, stars, and structures to observe, making it a summer favorite. Some other excellent examples of emission nebulae are the California Nebula in Perseus and the North American Nebula in Cygnus. In fact, Cygnus is loaded with emission nebulae. The skies of the Southern Hemisphere have some exquisite emission nebulae as well, but none is finer than the Carina or Carina Nebula. It is a massive star-forming region located roughly 7,500 light years away in the constellation Carina. The Carina Nebula is home to some of the most massive and luminous stars in our galaxy, including the enigmatic star system Eta Carinae. This nebula is more than four times the size of the Orion Nebula, 
and is an incredibly rich and complex region of our Milky Way. These nebulae are not just visually stunning, they are also dynamic laboratories where we can observe the processes that shape stars and galaxies. Through detailed observations across various wavelengths, from visible light to infrared and radio, astronomers have been able to probe these nebulae, revealing the intricate details of star formation, gas dynamics, and chemical evolution. The study of these regions helps us to understand not only how stars can form, but also how they impact their environment and contribute to the evolution of galaxies as a whole. So what is the best way that you can see these amazing nebulae for yourself? Whether you're a beginner or an experienced observer, here are some tips to help you make the most of your observing sessions. Step one, choose the right location. The quality of your observing site is critical when it comes to viewing any deep sky object, but especially for emission nebulae. These objects can be large and faint and are best observed from a dark sky location, well away from the glare of city lights. Light pollution significantly reduces the contrast needed to see the subtle details in the nebulae, so finding a remote location with minimal artificial light is key. National parks, designated dark sky preserves, and some rural areas with minimal development are ideal for this purpose. Just ask permission if you find a good spot on private property. Many owners won't mind you setting up, but make sure to get their permission. Now you've found a place to observe. Step two, use the right equipment. While a good pair of binoculars can reveal some of the brightest emission nebulae, like the Orion Nebula, a small to medium-sized telescope will provide more detail and bring out fainter features and other objects within the nebulae. For the best results, especially with fainter nebulae, consider using a telescope with an aperture of at least six inches. To further enhance your viewing experience, consider adding specialized filters to your setup. An O3 or oxygen-3 filter is particularly effective for increasing contrast by allowing the light from doubly ionized oxygen atoms to pass through while blocking most other wavelengths. Similarly, a hydrogen alpha or HA filter will isolate the specific wavelength of light emitted by the ionized hydrogen, making the nebulae appear more vivid against the dark background of space. There are many broadband filters that will work on different types of objects as well that could work for you. I'll leave links in the show notes to some of the filters that I use. Step three, timing your observations. The timing of your observing session can have a significant impact on your ability to see emission nebulae. The best time to observe these objects is near the new moon or when the moon is below the horizon. Even a crescent moon can add unwanted light to the sky washing out the faint details within a nebula. On moonless nights, the nebulae's delicate structures will be much easier to discern. Also, be mindful of the season. Many emission nebulae are best observed during specific times of the year when they are high in the sky and away from the horizon where atmospheric distortion is minimized. Step 4. Navigating the Night Sky Finding emission nebulae in the vast expanse of the night sky can be challenging, especially for beginners. To assist with this, use detailed star charts or astronomy apps. Modern astronomy apps like Stellarium offer real-time data on the location, visibility, and the best viewing times for various celestial objects. Tools like Stellarium can provide overlays for showing the boundaries of emission nebula, making it easier to pinpoint their exact location. You can also use an old-fashioned star chart. These should not be overlooked. There are field editions of charts like Sky Atlas 2000 that will make finding objects a breeze. I'll leave a link to one in the show notes. Step 5. Planning your observations. Successful observation of emission nebulae often requires careful planning. Make a list of targets based on the time of year and the visibility of nebulae in your region. Research the specific features of each nebula you intend to observe. Knowing what to look for can help you identify structures like dark dust lands, star-forming regions, or bright knots of gas. This kind of preparation ensures that when you're under the stars, you can maximize your time and focus on capturing the best possible views of these fascinating objects. By following these guidelines, you'll be well on your way to enjoying the mesmerizing sights that emission nebulae have to offer. 
Whether you're captivated by the pillars of creation in the Eagle Nebula or the vast star-forming regions of the Orion Nebula, each observation brings a deeper connection to the cosmos and a greater understanding of the processes that shape our universe. Throughout history, emission nebulae have not only captivated astronomers, but also left an indelible mark on human culture, inspiring myths, legends, and even scientific revolutions. These glowing clouds of gas have been observed by ancient civilizations and have often been interpreted as divine or mystical phenomena, shaping the way early societies understood the cosmos. Take the Orion Nebula, for example, one of the most famous and easily observed emission nebulae in the night sky. This brilliant patch of light in the constellation Orion has been a source of fascination for thousands of years. The ancient Egyptians, for instance, associated the constellation Orion with Osiris, the god of the afterlife, and saw the nebula as part of the cosmic landscape that guided souls to the afterlife. In other cultures, the bright starry region of Orion was often viewed as a celestial hunter or warrior, and the nebula within it was seen as a wound or a glowing fire. These mythological interpretations highlight how deeply the night sky was intertwined with human spirituality and imagination. In the Middle Ages, as European astronomers began to systematically catalog the night sky, the Orion Nebula was one of the first nebulae to be recognized as a distinct astronomical object rather than a simple star cluster or unresolved patch of light. This discovery marked an important turning point in the history of astronomy, as it challenged the long-held view of Aristotle that the heavens were unchanging and perfect. The realization that nebulae were vast, diffuse objects, rather than solid, fixed stars, contributed to the eventual shift toward a more dynamic understanding of the universe. The cultural impact of emission nebulae extends beyond myths and early astronomy. In more recent history, they have continued to inspire artists, writers, and thinkers. The Orion Nebula, with its vivid hues and dramatic star-forming regions, has been a subject of countless artworks and literary references, symbolizing the mystery and majesty of the cosmos. The pillars of creation in the Eagle Nebula, first captured by the Hubble Space Telescope, have become iconic symbols of cosmic beauty and the power of star formation, sparking public interest in space science and inspiring a generation of astronomers and space enthusiasts. Moreover, the study of emission nebulae has played a crucial role in advancing our scientific understanding of the universe. Observations of these nebulae have provided critical insights into the processes of star formation, the life cycle of stars, and the chemical enrichment of galaxies. They have also been instrumental in the development of spectroscopy, a technique that allows astronomers to determine the composition, temperature, and motion of celestial bodies by analyzing the light that they emit. This method has revolutionized our ability to study the universe and continues to be a cornerstone of modern astrophysics. In essence, emission nebulae are more than just beautiful objects in the night sky. They are deeply woven into the fabric of human culture and scientific discovery. From ancient myths to modern science, these glowing clouds of gas have shaped our understanding of the cosmos and our place within it. As we continue to study and observe them, emission nebulae will undoubtedly remain a source of inspiration and wonder for generations to come. Emission nebulae have been instrumental in advancing our understanding of the universe on multiple fronts. One of the most profound contributions of emission nebulae to our understanding of the cosmos lies in their role as stellar nurseries. In regions like the Eagle Nebula, astronomers can directly observe the early stages of star formation, where dense clouds of gas collapse under gravity to form new stars. The intense radiation from these young stars ionizes the surrounding gas, causing the nebula to glow and providing a vivid demonstration of the feedback processes that occur in stellar evolution. This helps scientists to develop and refine theories about how stars and planetary systems form and evolve over time. Beyond stellar formation, emission nebulae also offer a unique window into the interstellar medium, or ISM, which is the vast expanse of gas, dust, and cosmic rays that exists between stars and a galaxy. By studying the light emitted by these nebulae, 
astronomers can learn about the composition, temperature, density, and motion of the gas in the ISM. This information is crucial for understanding how galaxies evolve, as the ISM plays a key role in the recycling of material that fuels future generations of stars. Emission nebula have also played a key role in calibrating the distance scale of the universe. By analyzing the properties of emission nebulae in different regions of the Milky Way and other galaxies, astronomers can estimate distances and gain insights into the structure and scale of the cosmos. This has been particularly important in the study of galactic spiral arms, where emission nebulae are often found, as well as in understanding the broader distribution of star-forming regions across the universe. In summary, emission nebulae are not just beautiful objects in the night sky. They are fundamental to our exploration and understanding of the universe, from revealing the secrets of star formation and the interstellar medium, to enhancing our knowledge of the chemical makeup of the universe and helping to map out the structure of galaxies. These nebulae have been central to many of the most important discoveries in modern astronomy. As our observational techniques continue to improve, the study of emission nebulae will undoubtedly yield even more profound insights into the nature of the universe and our place within it. Thank you for joining me on this journey through the fun and interesting world of emission nebulae. I hope this episode has sparked your curiosity and provided you with a deeper appreciation for these luminous regions of the sky. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope that you found our time together to be fun and helpful. If you have questions or episode suggestions, please email us at astroguypodcast at gmail.com or leave us a text or a voicemail at 973-404-0380. If you're not already a member, please join the Astro Guy Podcast group on Facebook. You'll find other members, videos, blogs, and lots of other useful information there for your enjoyment. You can also visit our YouTube channel, the Astro Guy Podcast, for past episodes and other surprises. Please subscribe. Please consider leaving us a review on your podcast platform. It helps us to get new listeners. If you'd like to support the Astro Guy Podcast and YouTube channel, you can simply buy us a cup of coffee. The money is used to maintain and update the equipment that we use to create and publish the show. The link is in the show notes. Thank you again for listening, and may your skies be clear. As always, Carpe Noctum, seize the night. I'm Wayne Zool, and this was the Astro Guy Podcast. Thank you for listening. As always, your questions, comments, and suggestions are welcome. Keep wondering. Keep your eyes on the sky. Have fun. Carpe Noctum. Seize the night.